brought to you by Charity Mobile, the phone company that supports life and family. 5% of your monthly plan price goes to your favorite charity. Buy the way you believe at CharityMobile.com and use promo code TRADITION. We're nearing the end of our examination into Pope St. Pius X's landmark encyclical, Pascendi Dominici Gregis. In today's short excerpt, we begin to look at the solution to defeating the modernists. How do we defeat them? This was written more than 100 years ago, so in hindsight, either this didn't work or it was um, ignored by those who would be in charge of implementing these changes. We go through the first major change here that Pius X recommended. And it wasn't so much a change, it was just following through with what his predecessor did. In this, Pius X praises the efforts of Pope Leo XIII to curb the rise of modernism through the re-emphasis of scholasticism, which is the philosophy and theology of St. Thomas Aquinas. Leo XIII declared it to be the official theology of the Catholic Church. And Pius X here doubles down on that and says the best way to defeat the modernist is to make sure that every priest is trained in theology, and that any priests who manage to get through the system without being trained in Thomistic theology, their ordinations and their credentials would be considered null and void. Remember all this when we think about and hear from certain prelates in the church today that Vatican II gave us a new theology. Remedies Against Modernism Against this host of grave errors, and its secret and open advance, our predecessor, Leo XIII of Happy Memory, worked strenuously especially as regards the Bible, both in his words and his acts. But as we have seen, the modernists are not easily deterred by such weapons. With an affection of submission and respect, they proceeded to twist the words of the pontiff to their own sense, and his acts they described as directed against others than themselves. And the evil has gone on increasing from day to day. We therefore, venerable brethren, have determined to adopt at once the most efficacious means in our power, and we beg and conjure you to see to it that in this most grave matter nobody will ever be able to say that you have been in the slightest degree wanting in vigilance, zeal, or firmness. And what we ask of you and expect of you, we ask and expect of all other pastors of souls, of all educators and professors of clerics, and in a very special way of the superiors of religious institutes. In the first place, with regard to studies, we will and ordain that scholastic philosophy be made the basis of the sacred sciences. It goes without saying that if anything is met with among the scholastic doctors which may be regarded as an excess of subtlety or which is altogether destitute of probability, we have no desire whatever to propose it for the imitation of present generations. See Leo XIII's encyclical Eterni Patris. And let it be clearly understood above all things that the scholastic philosophy we prescribe is that which the angelic doctors bequeath to us, and we therefore declare that all the ordinances of our predecessor on this subject continue fully in force, and, as far as may be necessary, we do decree anew and confirm and ordain that they be by all strictly observed. In seminaries where they may have been neglected, let the bishops impose them and require their observance, and let this apply also to the superiors of religious institutions. Further, let professors remember that they cannot set St. Thomas aside, especially in metaphysical questions, without grave detriment. On this philosophical foundation, the theological edifice is to be solidly raised. Promote the study of theology, venerable brethren, by all means in your power, so that your clerics on leaving the seminaries may admire and love it, and always find their delight in it. For in the vast and varied abundance of studies opening before the mind, desirous of truth, everybody knows how the old maxim describes theology as so far in front of all others that every science and art should serve it and be to it as handmaidens. See Leo XIII's letter in Magna. We will add that we deem worthy of praise those who, with full respect for tradition, the Holy Fathers and the Ecclesial Magisterium, undertake with well-balanced judgment and guided by Catholic principles, which is not always the case, seek to illustrate positive theology by throwing the light of true history upon it. Certainly, more attention must be paid to positive theology than in the past, but this must be done without detriment to scholastic theology. And those are to be disproved as of modernist tendencies who exalt positive theology in such a way as to seem to despise the scholastic. 
With regard to profane studies, suffice it to recall here what our predecessor has admirably said. Apply yourselves energetically to the study of natural sciences, the brilliant discoveries and the bold and useful applications of them made in our times, which have won such applause by our contemporaries, will be an object of perpetual praise for those that come after us. See Leo XIII's allocution given on March 7th, 1880. But do this without interfering with sacred studies, as our predecessor in these most grave words prescribe. If you carefully search for the cause of those errors, you will find that it lies in the fact that in these days, when the natural sciences absorb so much study, the more severe and lofty studies have been proportionally neglected. Some of them have almost passed into oblivion. Some of them are pursued in a half-hearted or superficial way. And, sad to say, now that they are fallen from their old estate, they have been disfigured by twisted doctrines and monstrous errors. We ordain, therefore, that the study of natural science in these seminaries be carried on under this law. All these prescriptions and those of our predecessor are to be borne in mind whenever there is question of choosing directors and professors for seminaries and Catholic universities. Anybody who in any way is found to be imbued with modernism is to be excluded without compunction from these offices, and those who already occupy them are to be withdrawn. The same policy is to be adopted toward those who favor modernism, either by extolling the modernists or excusing their culpable conduct, by criticizing scholasticism, the Holy Father, or by refusing obedience to ecclesiastical authority in any of its depositaries. And towards those who show a love of novelty in history, archaeology, biblical exegesis, and finally, towards those who neglect the sacred sciences or, or appear to prefer them to the profane. In all these questions of studies, venerable brethren, you cannot be too watchful or too constant, but most of all in the choice of your professors, for as a rule the students are modeled after the pattern of their masters. Strong in the consciousness of your duty, act always prudently but vigorously. Equal diligence and severity are to be used in examining and selecting con candidates for holy orders. Far, far from the clergy be the love of novelty. God hates the proud and the obstinate. For the future, the doctorate of theology and canon law must never be conferred on anybody who has not made the regular course of scholastic philosophy. If conferred, it shall be held as null and void. The rules laid down in 1896 by the Sacred Congregation of Bishops and Regulars for the Clerics, both secular and regular, of Italy concerning the frequenting of the universities, we now decree to be extended to all nations. Clerics and priests inscribed in a Catholic institute or university must not in the future follow in the civil universities those courses for which there are chairs in the Catholic institutes to which they belong. If this has been permitted anywhere in the past, we ordain that it be not allowed for the future. Let the bishops who form the governing body of such Catholic institutions or universities watch with all care that these our commands be constantly observed. And that was Pope St. Pius X bringing the first of his solutions to the crisis of modernism, that we must have a reemphasis and a refocus on Thomistic theology, and we must reject the ambiguities that come from the modernists. It is a clear call to reject ambiguity. And quite frankly, every pope since Vatican II and the documents themselves in the council are riddled with ambiguity. It's how a traditionally minded Catholic and a modernist can both read the document on the liturgy from Vatican II, Sacrosanctum Concilium, and come away with two very different interpretations of it. Ambiguity is not from God. It simply cannot be from God. And this is why ambiguity must be crushed. It must be wiped out. Everything must be crystal clear in the church. That was what Pius X was calling for here. Perhaps someday we'll get a pope who will actually implement Pascendi fully. Let me know what you think of this in the comments, please. Hit like and subscribe if you haven't, it does help. So does sharing this on social media, that helps too. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein, Ave Maria.